I'm delighted to be here at the London Health Show. My name is Joe Bocas and I'm a digital health entrepreneur with a particular focus on wearable technologies and digital health as a whole. And also I'm interested in the Internet of Things. But the focus today is on uh, digital health. Okay? So you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm fairly active. So if you tweet, I try to tweet you back and, and follow you and you follow me and we can have an interaction. But the purpose of the session today is to stimulate discussions and um, explore innovative approaches. When I was asked to do this, uh, the organizers asked me to do a 30-35 minutes slot and then 10-15 minutes questions and answers. But I'm actually not going to do that. We're going to have an interactive session. So I want your input. I don't really want to be talking, to be honest, for 30 or 35 minutes. And then in the end, everyone is thinking about other things. We all forget about the good stuff in the slides. So as we go along, if you are happy with it, we'll have a bit of a discussion. I also believe that in terms of innovation, if we collaborate as we go along, we get a better result because I learn with you and hopefully you learn something with me. Is everyone happy with that? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, collaboration drives innovation. That's the sentence I wanted to say. And also now one of the biggest trends in digital health is co-creation on bringing everybody from different stakeholders to the picture. For example, if you're trying to develop an app, you want really your end users, the patients, to collaborate in that process of creating the application and the solution because you want to hear from different angles. And that's in a nutshell what I'm trying to achieve today, a bit of a co-creation session. Great. I also do quite a lot of this. I regularly speak nationally and internationally on digital health and uh, IoT, Internet of Things, but with a focus on wearable technologies. I run Salutem, is my own digital health uh, consultancy business, and we are a B2B agency that helps innovative companies that have the potential to disrupt the markets, uh, penetrating new markets. So I work with international companies to come to UK and the other, and the other way around. Okay, but the big thing, digital health, the opportunity, I believe that it's a, not a great opportunity for all of us to use digital health in terms of business for our own profit and benefit, but also to help our clients. Because now everyone is kind of tuned in to the mobile technology. So it's fairly easy to try to reach the masses. But you tell me what you think about the opportunity is going to bring for you or for your clients or for the market as a whole. Anything whatsoever. Are you using any digital tools already? Put your hand up and intervene. Anyone using any apps? Health apps or fitness apps? Right. Do you want to tell me anything about an app that you use or any experiences? Map my run. My fitness ball. That's a very popular one, isn't it? And and what are you trying to achieve with it? Great. So you're trying to become more aware about the levels of exercise and other components, nutrition. So in the, you are interested in see a pattern, right? And improving. Yeah, because data give is, gives you meaningful insights and that's great. Anyone else? Anyone else? Do you want to say something? Um, I use Sharma, which is a uh, meditation tool for programming your own meditations and dealing with uh, deep meditation uh, sort of alpha beta waves of the brain to, to uh, help release stress.
Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. So it's called Sharma. Sharma, a meditation tool that we can use ourselves and hopefully to deploy, deploy to people that is struggling to a particular health issue, right? Brilliant. Fantastic. I'm really happy that everyone is already in the mode of using digital health. So I, I knew th this wouldn't be a, a, a new subject. So everyone is tuned in. So the opportunity is there for um, all of us. There are some facts about digital health. So the health tech uh, market is the most exciting and is the most profitable sector projected for 2016 and is actually uh, a net margin uh, projected of 21.6% profit, which is very high, very high in terms of business. Because some businesses in terms of, for example, if you go to the distribution business, your net profit is maybe around 10%, which is fairly large after all the costing and everything. So health tech is very, very exciting. There are 160,000 health apps and wellness apps in the market. So with that is an opportunity to use them, but also is a very competitive market. In, if you're thinking about creating anything, think twice, because there's already a lot of stuff out there. But the digital health market is projected to be worth over 150 billion pounds by 2020, which is an astronomic number in terms as a market with different segments and different things that we can tap in as business people, but also as consumers. And then the last uh, stat there is 76% of adults in UK already have a smartphone, which is really, really good. So when I mentioned before that we already tuned in into the mobile technologies, there is a fact that uh, backs that up. And I've got another little statistic there for you. Did you know that 53% of smartphone users go back to their smartphone in the morning within five minutes of waking up? That's quite a start. I think I'm one of them because I put my alarm clock in the morning and I go on to switch it off. I use my iPhone for, for that. Yeah. Uh, is including all the health and, health and fitness apps, this, this number, including medical apps and everything at the moment, yeah. I'm conscious about moving away from the mic because I want you to hear me and project my voice, but if I'm honest, I don't want to be stuck in here. I like to move around and, okay. Anyone has any comments on that? Okay, digital health, what's next? In terms of definition, digital health is a blend of uh, software and hardware solutions that enables us to track, monitor, and managing any individual uh, health or population's health and, and wellness. This is a broader uh, uh, definition. Does anyone else got any other inputs or definitions that you can think of or anything to add to that? Anything whatsoever. Or this is more or, less, more, more or less in line what you thought digital health it is or could be. Yeah? Okay, what do you think is next in store in, st in, in, in terms of digital health? What do you project in terms of market? Right, why digital health? In here, I'll give you a bit of background because can you all hear me okay? I'll give you a bit of background. I don't want to be stuck there behind the computer, to be honest. Uh, I'll give you a bit of background in terms of how exciting is the market as a whole, but also this is not just something that came up in 2015 or 2016. It's been a lead up to it. So there's some stats there about since 2010, 
the digital health and wellness investments have grown from 1.05 billion to 2.79 billion. This is a US stat by 2013. So it's a, a clear lead up to the exciting market that we all eventually are involved or will be involved with. And the numbers are just growing and growing all the time. There are now venture capitalists, VCs, uh, funding companies, private funding companies, very interested in digital health because it's such an opportunity. It really is. They're very scalable business if uh, they are done in the right way. Also now you have uh, big players really interested in all this. The health insurance companies, they're interested in the trends, in the data, in helping their clients to claim less because they get meaningful data. Now we have the pharmaceutical companies very interested in digital health and other blue chip companies that eventually can link digital health with other internet of things. Because even if we're talking about different sets of data, other information from different places, they're not, dif they're not related directly with di digital health, they can be associated or they can be linked to digital health in some way. And it's very difficult to talk about digital health without talking about wearables. It's kind of uh, mission impossible. So now I'm going to have a focus on wearable technologies. Uh, in 2015, everyone predicted that the wearables year was there. 2015 was the year of wearables. Everyone was really excited. But actually, I'm going to challenge that, and I believe that 2016 is actually the year, the year of wearables. Wearable technologies are very, very exciting right now. And um, the projections are the adoption rights, they're just going to grow. More people will use wearables. And more people, we, we use them for different things. I read... Uh, a study yesterday that uh, mentioned that about 14% of uh, Brits are intending to get the wearable. 14% is quite a high number. We are 60 million people in UK, so you do your maths. It's a projection, but if even if you achieve 10%, uh, uh, the wearable technology is very, very exciting. And also, innovative things are coming to the market all the time. It's not just about tracking your steps anymore. It really, really isn't. We're moving things farther and faster. Does anyone have any input on wearables? Please, go ahead. Ah, you got the Fitbit. I shouldn't promote any brands. Right, fantastic. So now we're seeing the heart rate monitors coming out as smart watches or wearable fitness uh, uh, wrist brands. But then we also have the sleep data. I've got one as well. I'm more interested in my sleep because now I've become a bit less active, I would say. But I really keep one eye on my sleep. Does anyone else are using any wearables or intended to use a wearable? Oh, you got the heart rate one. Yeah. HR, HR, right, right. Intending to. Intending to. Ah, brilliant, brilliant. Is anyone else? Tom, Tom. Wow, oh, there's so many coming out. We have to keep up with it. Anyone else? Ah, that's also a Fitbit. Is the one? What is it called? The one? Fitbit one? Right. That's a great one because it's very mobile. You can stick in your bag or. Right. You got the Apple Watch. That's a great wearable, isn't it? And also a watch. In, in, interesting that piece of uh, the notifications and, and, and different uh, bits of data coming in. 
that's very very interesting and and for sure we will see more coming out in the coming year and in the years ahead so that's a bit of a definition if you like about what is uh, wearable tech so it's some technologies that we can incorporate uh, more or less anywhere that are intended to be used on a day-to-day day -day basis so now we started with smartwatch and you remember when the google glasses came out everyone was really excited but now things are moving ahead and go to bracelets and eventually go to our clothing in the future um, the projection actually and, and is very very uh, exciting about getting the wearables in in different places but where do you see the wearables going does anyone have any some innovative ideas Like a chip in your body. That's very, very interesting. Like a chip, like an implant. Very interesting. I'm sure that will come up. <laughs> an implant. More things. Tell me more things. What do you vision? Fantastic. Tablets that will be eventually a solution. Have you been reading my presentation anyway? Right. Any 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 other things? Muscle monitors. Muscle monitors. Brilliant. Because now we're moving a step ahead. Before the wearable was only was only about monitoring in a very basic way. Now things are really progressing into different places, smaller and smarter. Much smaller and much smarter, I should say. And here are some places where you will see the wearables and you're already seeing them anyway. It's a bit there missing on top, which is the wrist with the 36%. It's still the most popular place right now. But then we see the chest is more about the fitness bands with the heart rates. They're still very popular. And then we have pocket, shoes, places uh, on your arm, head, ears. And now one thing that is coming out, the new trends, is rings is um, a small percentage of the market right now but this is a new trend I know a company in Finland they're very innovative by the way in Finland uh, called mood metric they have this ring I really uh, I'm not promoting the brand I don't have any commission or any interest there but they are very innovative it's called mood metric they got this amazing ring that allows you to uh, measure your emotions eventually you go back to the stress have a more aligned and balanced life but it gives me it gives you some really uh, meaningful data on emotions and emotional state and emotional state as we all know is fundamental to wealth and well-being mood metric amazing uh, cutting edge rings especially for ladies i don't know if there is an angle there for the men but for the ladies, it's very, very appealing. Right. Okay, and the future was already mentioned, but the future is, the future of wearables is smart fabrics. It's not actually devices anymore. So, in a few years, or maybe even next year, I know the greater innovators, uh, um, Apple and Fitbits, they're always thinking ahead. But we will not see this focus on getting the wearables on your wrist anymore. We'll see them in fabrics, in our jackets, in our t-shirts, in our socks. Anywhere that you think possible, that's where the wearable is going to be. So we actually going to, okay, moving the innovation faster, but also we're going to try to target a couple of things because with wearables, there are some challenges, right? What happens when the battery runs out? What happens when I forget my wearable? And that's what the, some innovative companies are trying to target. So make sure you have your wearable at all times. So if it's in a piece of clothing, you are wearing the clothing, you will have the wearable. You will not have the problem of forgetting the wearable or even the battery run out or leave it at home. 
Um, I also have uh, a bit of a miracle thesis in here when I talk about wearables. And I like to mention that in all my talks. I don't believe the wearables are the miracle. Even though I love wearables, I believe we are the miracle. The human being, you are the miracle, I am the miracle. As human beings, we are the miracle. Because the wearables, everybody thinks, right, I'm going to get the wearable and the miracle is going to happen. It doesn't happen that way. It's like going to the gym. You get the gym membership, you're not going to get fitter. You got to go to the gym and do the workout, isn't it? It doesn't happen by osmosis. The wearables is the same thing. They are great, but they are here to assist us. The human being is still the main ingredient there, I'm afraid. But I love wearables. I use it and you know, I talk about it and I know a bit about them. I love them, but we must not get confused. It's not about getting the wearable, put it on your wrist and wait for the miracle to happen. Have you got anything else to add to the wearables and anything else in particular now before we move on? Is everyone happy? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, now some trends. That's why I said you've been reading my presentation. Now some trends around the wearables. So we have the ingestibles. As the name gives away, there'll be things that we will ingest uh, into our bodies. For example, as a magic pill. Some in the digital health market, they even call the digital pill. There are a company in America just innovating around that. They're actually getting the, the improvements uh, ready now from the Food and Drug Association. Uh, they have a pill with some uh, magnesium and other, um, and other um, digestibles that will eventually release a signal when the pill is taken to your body, communicates through the, the sensors to an app, which is an amazing thing. For example, if you're talking about medication adherence, if you have a person, let's say, with a long-term condition that needs to take medication regularly at the right time, how do you know that they are taking it? And what happens is when we go to the doctors, the doctors ask us, have you been taking your medication? And we say, because we don't want to lie, we say, uh, yeah, and who knows if you've been taking a medication. So in here now, the revolution is really takes us to a different place. We will know if we take a medication. So ingestibles are a very exciting trends. And then we have the embeddables that uh, the lady over there was talking about the embeddables. Um, mini chips or sensors that can be under your muscles, under your skin, or even under your tendons that eventually have a sensor that will capture information around vital signs and other types of data, meaningful data that it can be shared and uh, collected. And then also we have the invisibles. The invisibles. It can be a uh, Tech patch. I don't know if you've seen anything around that now. It looks like a tattoo with some code on it. It looks like the code is actually the sensor. It looks like a barcode when you go to a supermarket, buy a product, you got the barcode. It's exactly the same thing, but it's a patch that you stick on your arm or leg or other part of your body, and they call it the invisibles. It's very, very exciting. Uh, and you will not have that problem about the adherence, about oh, I ran out of battery, oh, I left my wearable at home. They will be with you. The information will be gathered in a very, very secure and reliable way. Yeah, any, anything on that, on, on the trends or anything else that you want to um, add on to, to the conversation? This, I'm sure you already read some articles and things about this. Did, did you all know about the new trends or this is new to you or you know anything new that I don't know? Please share. I'm just wondering about the invisible sunlight. You say that you're talking about the parents, but how did you charge that? Like how did it run when it runs the solar power? Presumably it still needs some kind of battery. So this is all new, but the at the moment, 
the sticky patches that they are disposable, use it once. So for per if, for example, you, you need to use it every day, you need a different patch every day, they're very, very low cost. So you won't have the problem about charging it or getting, it's like, actually, it's like a plastic sticker. Anything else? Anyone else? Well, the security aspect of this data being collected and search uh, computed the hacks from the hacks. Mm. I mean, one could say that this information is collected in more shortly than measures, because at the moment, mm. measures aren't in place, are they, to protect this data, this information? Now we're entering a completely different conversation about data security but when you use a patch or a wearable you are in control of your data for example the invisibles they will be very focused on the clinical research and the actually health data around a particular issue we're not talking about just general data but for example with the likes of fitbit or misfit or other wearables you are in charge of your uh, health data you can share your health data with them or not but also, the companies around in healthcare, they are um, responsible for collecting your data and have your data anonymized somewhere in a secure in a secure way. And also, there is European uh, legislation around this now. So old there is legislation. So the companies they need to be compliant about collecting health data, but having the data, the health data secure. So there are measures in, in, in place. Fairly new, but there are measures in place. Anyone else wants to add anything to the... It's not just signing up to Big Brother. It's almost not just signing up to Big Brother. Well, we hope not, because in here what we're trying to achieve if, is to help the individual around a particular health issue or gathering some meaningful data that will help a person with, um, with, health, with an health condition. This not, I don't think we're going to go in that direction, but it's a very a good point because otherwise it becomes a very suspicious thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and the power is in your hands, I should say, in our hands. What really drives innovation? We think this, the the big companies that drive innovation, Apple, Microsoft, Google. Okay, they drive innovation, it's very, very true. But what really drives innovation is the consumer. The consumer is the driver for innovation. We are asking for the next thing. So in, in theory, we are asking them without asking them to do the next wearable, to take it away from our wrists, put in our socks, under our foot, under our shoes. Whatever that is, we are actually the drivers for innovation. And also, as people, we know that technology is helping us in our daily lives. So it's just a natural progression. Things are moving fast, fast all the time. And what's in your opinion? What's next? Please share with me. What, is, what do you envision? around digital health or anything else that you feel uh, comfortable about sharing. What do you see that is next in, in terms of innovation? Please share. What do you mean, electrical? Like some kind of electrical Very interesting comment. So what you're trying to say is um, a bit of an alarm, um, a predictive alarm. So say if you're at high risk of having a stroke or a heart attack, you already mm. have maybe heart disease or you've got an aneurysm, and then if you're if you measure maybe you can like measure your electrodes and your like mm -hmm. stimulation and kind of if you if it gets to like a certain point that you're at risk that you're at high risk of stroke, like higher or not, and maybe it sends like a message to your loved one or something to let them know. Mm. 
I think that our company is trying to innovate around that. It's actually quite hard, but the idea is very, very good. So we're talking about some preemptive and kind of early diagnosing or preventing Right. So there is the connected technology enablement to sign, uh, uh, to send messages, and to actually invite other people or the medical profession or actually loved ones into the mix. There are already a couple of things in the market like that in terms of connectivity. No, but 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 it's very forward thinking what you're trying to to explain. So it's a bit like preemptive but also sharing an episode uh, fit or whatever that is at the same time. Yeah, fantastic. Anyone else have anything else to share they would like to see or already seen already? Okay, what I would like to talk about is usually when I do these talks, I'd like to talk about make a connection of the intersection of the enterprise implications, which is the business side of things with the consumer behavior. And when the wearables is such an exciting proposition, we are ready. I go back to that statistic of 14% of people intend to have a wearable. It's quite a large um, segment of the population. In, they're trying to track something or they're trying to get something out of the wearable. Help the wearable to help themselves, them to help the wearable. So it's very, very good. And also the consumers are like entrepreneurs. I just had the proof of that a minute ago. Um, they're very problem solving orientated. We are very, very well educated. It's not like 50 years ago, someone mentioned something like that. I would like to think, well, that's out of this world. It's not going to happen. Now we are actually, we work with close with entrepreneurs. We understand as consumers what's going on right away. So there are not we more or less on the same page because everything is shared not just in the social media but in the media as a whole so we know the next thing we know that iphone 7 will come out i don't know in september of 2016 we all know that we know there will be a solution with the embeddables or digestive pill for so everything is moving fast but the adoption and the consumer behavior is actually uh, running in parallel with innovation, which is uh, which is fantastic. Anyone else got any more thoughts on on this or anything else? Okay. So healthcare is changing for sure, and the healthcare is actually the field that uh, I operate the most because I'm also linked to some health tech startups and I've been involved in digital health for quite a while. But I would like to ask you, how do you see? healthcare evolving is already evolving a lot but how do you see it changing it share your thoughts please i'm gonna try to repeat what you just said because away from the microphone i'll lose so uh, go with me in the ideal world we will be able to share our health data and to see your health data and be the owner of that and eventually share go back to your point with the medical professionals loved ones family members or anyone else directly involved and interested in that uh, problem or in that uh, process okay anything else about health care So, health data is all good, but it always brings the same issue, the privacy, and there are many studies that people are very reluctant of 
sharing the health data. That is something that as consumers we have to uh, starting to reshape our thinking and just be able to share our health data without any suspicion. I know the problem is there are people out there trying to make money with our health data. That's the problem. But for example, when you go to the doctor, he asks you if you got um, a condition, but he has access to your health data. He's trying to help you. He's not going to doubt it. Why does he have my health data? He's your doctor, right? He's the person there trying to help you. We have to put that kind of mentality and way of thinking when we're sharing our health data in the future, if he's actually a reliable source. For example, I don't have a problem in sharing my health data with a wearable company that give me something back or a nutrition app or if they're trying to help me, I don't have a problem with that. But if I know someone's trying to make money with me, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different story. But very good points. Uh, there are challenges ahead. Anyone else got any points on the healthcare umbrella as such as a whole or anything else related to the talk? Healthcare is... When you can get more data, surely the focus should be on using it for prevention rather than cure. Because that's the problem with it. This is what I was trying to get at. So if we have more data, we move towards a more preventative approach, right, in your own words, and move from this reactive side and fixing the problem. That's fantastic. That's where uh, healthcare is evolving, and that's the direction that is taking all of us, whether we like it or not. That was a very, very good value point. Do you, any, do you have anything else in mind around the prevention? So if we have more data, we can do some predictions because we'll see eventually some trends and we can stop the problem early and... A lot of illness is brought by lifestyle. So mm. if you can see that if you change your lifestyle, you will avoid the problem that you may get two years down the line. Fantastic, yeah. Lifestyle choices. We all know about them. In the air, in the room, everyone seems fairly fit and they have an, everyone's got an interest in the health show which is fantastic but um, yeah around cancer prevention around diabetes around copd around coronation heart disease they are actually preventable uh, diseases if we take some steps uh, towards prevention and eventually we can stop them and managing them better or actually avoid them altogether but that's where we want it to be fairly fit. But I like that about the prevention and about the different approach and instead of going to the intervention, analyze the data and analyze ourselves instead of going let ourselves go to the problem. Fantastic. I'm going to try to replicate what you just said. So there are apps out there they're helping the patients to manage their condition and the uptake of medita medication in a, be in a better way. Yeah, and it just helps to plan it better around your, your own schedule life. Mm. So they can do uh, much more um, a success successful planning around going away on holiday or whatever else and still manage the condition and the medication. It's very, very good. And also in the picture is a, well, it's a watch there, but there's an app or trying to be an app. The mobile health as referred in the digital health market as M Health is a very exciting proposition. I'm sure most of us already doing things with our phones, but mobile health represents an incredible opportunity for us as consumers, but as businesses as well with the remote monitoring real-time updates, notifications, data sharing, and also meaningful insights, because what I want to get from my data 
is something that is relevant to me. So in your case, it might be your levels of activity. In my case, it might be my sleep data. In someone else's case, it might be their heart function. Someone else's case might be the distance they walk or what time in the morning they walk. So we want to make the data relevant to us. So not all the data is good to me, but I mean the data will be eventually personalized. So for example, if you go back to a wearable uh, technology, all, all the wearables, they're not the same. They display different sets of data and they'll be more relevant to, other, to some people than the other people. So now in conclusion, some reflections about the digital health market, which is a very interesting uh, uh, market. I would like to finish the presentation on uh, reflecting on what uh, was said. Any takeaways, we mentioned the data, we mentioned the exciting developments about preventing conditions, we mentioned the wearables going in different places and, and things, and I believe that represents a really good opportunity for us to get involved as a human being, but also as a professional, because most of us in our room, we go an angle on helping people and, and helping ourselves eventually. So I'd like to finish the presentation by thanking you so much for taking part and making the workshop a very exciting presentation along with digital health. Feel free to connect with me in any way. And uh, I'll take any questions before you go, but I'm very, very happy because you helped me a lot in the presentation. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.